So welcome to another episode of the Proper Ugandan Podcast with Kaluji Siva and the K. And uh, yeah, sorry for a little bit of a gap between the episode, the last episode, but you know, we just roll with the punches. But for this episode, we've got another special guest. Um, this is a, an actor, writer, director. Um, I've been following his work uh, for a little while now. He's working on short films. He's been, he's been in a feature film um, that's on Netflix at the moment. We're talking to another proper Ugandan, Eddie Kabutuzi. Now, you've got to tell me, bro, did I say that name right? Did I say Kabutuzi? Perfect. Perfect. I tried to water it down for some people to understand. Um, oh, I say okay. Kabutuzi. How do you water it down? And it's ironic because it's Kabutusi, it, Amazi, like it's water related. So how do you, how do you water it down? People, I, I know people find it hard to say. Mm. Uh, and I, I just need to speak properly. As in when I say properly, I mean, I need to speak um, almost more eloquently for people to just to hear it properly, hear all the syllables. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no I hear you, bro. But I'm the same with my name as well, like... Like, you obviously, I, I went by a different name before. And when mm-hmm. I first kind of like started introducing myself as Kalunji, I had to like slow down because otherwise they couldn't hear it. They were like, what? Kalunji? Kaduji? You know? So, yeah, I hear you though. But I've got to ask, because this is like something I ask like all my guests. When was the first or last time you felt like a proper Ugandan? First or last time that you felt like a proper Ugandan? Um, it, it depends what your definition of, of a proper Ugandan is. Okay. What's your definition? I believe anyone that is from Uganda mm. and can relate. Uh, yeah, anyone that's just from Uganda. Um, it doesn't matter where you're born. It doesn't matter where you are living. Um, as long as you're, you've got Ugandan in your, in your blood, you're Ugandan. Mm. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I, I like that, man. I respect that as well because I've had people from like, who had different connections to Uganda. I've had people, you know, who've never stepped foot on Uga- in Uganda or on Ugandan soil. Like, I've had them on the podcast and we've talked about their Ugandan identity and how, I guess the lack of identity as a Ugandan that they feel. And at the end, actually, I've come to the conclusion that just the simple fact that you're, that you're waving a Ugandan flag, as we can see in the back, you know, I sat here strategically so people can see it. So yeah. as long as you're waving that flag, um, fit, fit physically and literally, but also metaphorically, then for me, you're a proper Ugandan, man, because you can add to all the other things. Like, if you don't speak the language, you can always learn the language. If you don't like the food, it's acquired, you know, you eventually like it. But yeah, but let me ask you this. So we met, I don't know if you remember when we met or how we met. But yeah, dude. Okay, Doc, what, what's your version of events? I do not remember what year it was. Yeah. But we were both shit in uh, Dark Plate Drama on Channel 4. Yes, yes. yes. Um, I was supposed to, I was supposed to play like a, like a, a reborn version of you, uh, a, a watered down version of you. Um, and that was the first time I remember meeting you. Mm. Yeah, I don't, I don't, do you know what? I don't remember that. Well, I do remember that, but I only remember that because we spoke about it afterwards. Yeah, yeah. Because we met properly afterwards. Because at the time, I didn't even know you were Ugandan. Yeah, same, same for you. I didn't know, although I saw your last name and I was like, oh, that could be you get, but could also be, I don't know, Tanzanian or Zambian. So I didn't wanna, didn't wanna risk it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so yeah, so we met on that. That was really interesting. But then I think either a little bit after or before that, you then did this like big film, Mirror Boy with Genevieve Naji. Um, 
So tell me, how did you get that? Because that's a Nigerian, that's like a Nollywood film. How did a Ugandan actor end up in a Nollywood <laughs> Nigerian film? <laughs> um, so my agent at the time had just submitted me. They, they were looking for, the director was looking for um, just a young boy to play, or an older boy to play younger. Um, and I'm, unfortunately, I'm blessed to look younger than I am. <laughs> um, I had to play a 15-year-old boy. Mm. Do you know how old I was? You I was 19? Yeah. 19? And I, I watched back the film and I'm like, no way was I 19 or, yeah, I, I was even between 19 and 20. I had finished my first year of uni. Yeah. And I watched back the film and I was like, Nah, I need to go gym. Oh, that's good. <laughs> I love you. Yeah. Young, but um, my agent had put me forward now, and um, I just met I met up with the director, and yeah, it's just how auditions go. Like you get the script, and you go in, you read. They you know, they might say do this, um, and you just change it up a bit. But they really liked me. Um, it's like they'd been waiting for me because they'd been searching for a while. So um, yeah, that's 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 how the mirror boy came around, and yeah, it's just it's just been go ever since. Dope. And right now, mirror boy is now on Netflix. Like, yeah. have you seen like people? You know, uh, have they been jumping in the DMs? Like, I know I have, but like, have they have people <laughs> been kind of like rediving into the Kabutusi DM just to see if they want to work with you or like, oh, you're the guy from Mirror Boy. Um, I haven't had any work offers, not yet, uh, which is cool. Um, but I have had people uh, still DM me saying, oh, I watched the film, thank you very much. No. And it's, it's really a humbling experience because at first, I'm not going to lie, it was annoying. <laughs> it was annoying because it's like, oh, you're that boy from Mirror Boy. And I've done other stuff. Yeah. I've done other stuff, so like, yeah, I'm in Mirabel, but I've I've also done stuff afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it got trained, but then I learned to appreciate it because I understood the position I was in. Mm. I was in a position where I could influence, and it's something I want to do. I want to influence um, a younger generation. Yeah, you know. Um. Yeah, so I've just uh, and and I, I had a I had grown a passion for African cinema since doing the Mirror Boy, mm. like. I, is something that I want to I wanna do much more of. Yeah, yeah. In the time that we're in now, I definitely want to um, fly that flag. Dope. And is that, when, when you were, so did you film Mirror Boy in Nigeria? Was that filmed in Nigeria? No, so that was filmed in Gambia. Oh, okay. So was that then, is that when you got the first idea to say, hey, if they can do it, making this film in Gambia, I can make my own films in another, in another African country. Where did you get that idea or that interest or inspiration? No, do you know what? It, it wasn't until, I don't, I don't know when it was, but it wasn't straight away. Mm. Um, I had, had been pursuing, since the end of the film, I'd been pursuing Nollywood Noli much more. Mm -hmm. Messaging directors, messaging actors, messaging agents in Nigeria. And um, what had happened was, I'd gone over there like twice um, for an award ceremony because the film, the film, <laughs> it bagged a lot of awards. So I'd mm. gone over there, tried to meet up with people. And I said to myself, from what I know of Nollywood, I'm not going to bring the, um, the level down. If anything I do, it has to be that level. Yeah. So I wasn't getting the offers. I wasn't getting the calls. I wasn't getting nothing. It was just radio silence in Nollywood. Um, despite me, yeah, despite me trying to push something, and I guess I guess that's something I've learned with experience. I just need to go more more ham with it. Um, yeah, I just need to go more ham with it. But it wasn't until I was like, do you know what? I want to make a film. I want to make a short film, or I want to make a feature film, and I'm going to use my contacts in Nigeria, and then. I don't know if it was the same day, but I, I, I sat on it for a while. And then I said, why am I making it in Nigeria? 
I was like, I'm not even from there. <laughs> yeah. It made no sense at all. I was trying to use, I guess, the contacts that I had out there. Mm. But it made no sense for me to make it in Nigeria if I'm a Ugandan. Yeah. And not, not, not that I have anything against Nigerian, but I'm Ugandan. So, like I said, let me go back home and see what they've got there. Mm. I started my research and stuff. Um, I was looking at what's popping out there. Um, the quality that's out there. The, the, the actors out there. I started looking at all these things. And then I found some people that were doing decent stuff. Because I believe Ugandans, or Africans in general, we have so much talent. You know? Yeah. It's being pushed in the right way. Mm. So um, I reached out to a few people out there and I was like, yo, I want to make a film. I don't know what it's going to be about, but I want to make a film. What are you saying? And then the conversations just started from there. And then since doing that, or well, since having that, having that seed planted in me, I was like, no, nah, this is bigger than me. Um, there is just so much I can do out there that they're not doing. With my experience that I've done here in the UK, mm-hmm. I am now able to go back and say, actually, let's do it this way because this way it makes more sense. Or there's a reason in why the Western world do things. I won't say all the reasons are correct, but it's what I'm used to and I can see what works and what doesn't work. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I went back and I said, yo, I'm making a film. Let's do this. And now I've just made my second film. And yeah, man, it's just been, it's just been good. Like, it's, it's the beginning of my journey. Oh, that's it. You know what? Like, I haven't had a chance. Obviously, you invited me to the, uh, the premiere for the first one, The Quarry, I think. Um, but I wasn't able to make it uh, for some reason. But I remember seeing the, the trailer, the promotional trailer, and seeing, oh, The Quarry. Uh, that would be the last thing I would imagine maybe a first-time filmmaker to be making a film about if they were going to Uganda. Like, me with my limited kind of imagination, I would mm-hmm. want to make a film, I guess, maybe, again, feeding into the Western's view of, of Africa. Like, maybe something poverty-related or something... Um, maybe family oriented, but you went for more, what looked like more kind of um, maybe environmental kind of um, film from the trailer, or am I wrong in that? Um, you're not really wrong. Hmm. That so the quarry for me was an experimental film. Okay. Um, like I said, I just wanted to find out what they can do. Okay. Um, in the capacity of production wise, so. The film, there's, there's not much dialogue. Mm. There's, there's no dialogue at all. There's probably like one line. Um, and that was intentional because I wanted to, to focus on behind the camera, how I can work with the film crew, how I can work with, with uh, costume, how I can work with all these, all these um, areas, all these roles um, in a film production and say, how am I going to push this? And what are the limitations or what are the things that I am potentially going to run into, mm. you know? And that's, that's what The Quarry was about for me. It was more of an experimental film. Um, and it was just, like, it was, I, I saw the location before and I was like, yeah, this is, this is partly what I want to do. Because you were saying about the poverty. Yeah. There's so much more to Africa. There's so much more to Uganda than poverty. Mm. You know, we're so rich rich in people, culture, music, food. There's so much things that we're rich in that I wanted to go out there and say, okay, what can I show the Western world of Uganda? Because they only know flies flies flying on people's faces. They know uh, poverty. They know, that's what they know. Mm. I've been to Uganda and I remember the first time I went to Uganda, or before I'd gone to Uganda, I was scared because of what I saw on TV. I was like, Mm. I don't want to go there if it's going to be like that. Mm. But then when I went there, it was so much different. And this is the thing that I didn't see out there. I mean, this is the thing that I didn't see before going out there. Yeah. You know? So, um, yeah, I wanted to just show Uganda in a different light. No, nah, that's good, man. Now, where, where did you, where was that quarry? Was it, where in Uganda was it? That was uh, between Entebbe and Kampala. Wow. I thought yeah. you would have had to like, yeah. go like deep into the eastern part of Uganda or something. Wow, so it was in near Kampala. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
That is so dope. And then, okay, I, obviously this is a bit of a selfish question because I want to make a film as well in Uganda. I want to make a feature film. And I guess one of the first problems or questions that I might have for myself is, how am I going to get in touch with like directors? And I think I even messaged you this, like how do I get in, in touch with people that can create a team for me to find me a DOP, a costume person, makeup person, or even get the actors? So how did you start? Did you just call up the people that you knew your cousins and say, hey, what's up, let's meet up? <laughs> nah. <laughs> <laughs> I look. I looked at what was out there, mm. um, like like the series that they have out there, and I just looked at people's names. Okay. okay. Looked at people's names and said, "All right, all right cool." Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. Yeah, you you went for a bit, but you're back. That's up. Mm. You're back. Now. I can hear you. Yeah. Okay, I, I, was, I was looking at people's names and I was like, all right, who can I contact? And I looked at um, the awards ceremonies out there and who was winning the awards. Mm. And there was, there was, there was, there was, at first, there was um, a particular company or particular people that I saw. Um, and I was like, all right, cool, I'm going to approach them. And I approached them. Like, I had, I had approached them and it was at the time, what's that film called? Queen of Kato was coming out. Oh yeah, yeah. And, oh, this is in Uganda. Cool. Let me see who's there. And then, then there was Myra. Myra was the director. She's um an Asian woman that's oh, based. Oh, me, me right there. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> mm. And I was like, cool. I'm gonna contact a company. So I contacted them, um, and I contacted another company as well. And I just had the conversations of, oh, I think we. Sh I want to create a film. How can you help me? And um, yeah, it was literally just, just through seeing who was on the list and going through the list and saying, all right, cool. And once you get a producer, it's, that's the producer's job. Yeah. Sorry, I don't know why my no, phone keeps on. No worries, no worries. Cutting out. Can you hear me? Can you see me? Yeah, uh, yes, 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 I can, I can hear you and see you. Yeah, so, um, yeah, once you get a producer, that's pretty much it. The producer is the one that, that finds the people. Um, yeah, they find the people. You as an executive producer, and I made myself an executive producer because I'm going to fund it. I get the say on um, who I want to cast. I get the say on who um, I want on my team. Um, I just have that much creative control, you know? So it's important yeah. a great producer a great producer because they bring all the team together because the thing is for me it was just walking in blind mm. it was walking in blind and just saying i want to do this if i lose the money i lose the money like i'm happy to put forward money i'm not rich yeah but I'm happy to put forward money that i don't mind losing mm. if they if they turn around and say actually we can't do this or they don't reply to my messages and I've sent them a grand, then that's a grand gone. Yeah. Like for me, money isn't, isn't an issue for me. Like money comes, it goes. Yeah. No, no, no. I, I, I hear Trust that. I, I hear that as well because I know in, in Uganda, but just like anywhere else, but in Uganda, yeah, money goes so quickly. And, you know, sometimes people quote you whatever they think they can get away with quoting you so they might you know charge you a bag when actually it was half a bag you know so yeah you just have to I guess be willing to you know make the right risks and say you know what I'm gonna have to take that L at least it's moved me a little bit closer to where I want to be but yeah. I want to ask you did you um so did you go for Mirrors Maisha Lab or did you go for another company? I went for another company. I went for another company for, for another uh, number of reasons um, that I won't share here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. For a number of reasons, yeah. Um, but I'm glad I went with the people who I went with. Uh, they're called Savannah Moon. Yes. I've learned a lot from them. Um, 
and yeah, they, they're, they're definitely people I'll definitely work with. Like yeah. they're out there, they're known. You yeah. know, I've been checking out some of the stuff that they've done, um, and especially I think the the main lady. Uh, I think is not is it Naika? It's Nana. Nana. It's Nana. Nana and Meme Kaga. Meme Kaga. Kagwa. Yeah, yeah. Nana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've, I've been following some of the stuff that she's doing, you know. Um, you know, she's done some big stuff as well in the States. And, you know, she's got her series up on YouTube as well. So I definitely would love to work with them. That's like a company that I got in contact with as well. I'd love to work with them. But, um, okay, cool. So now you're on your second film. But this one, is it a feature film or is it a short film? It's a series. Oh, it's a series. Okay, cool. Dope. Wow. Um, I sort of just jumped into it. <laughs> yeah. A series, and I've only shot the pilot mm. for the reason that I just need to get the funds to shoot the rest of the, the series. Mm. Um, yeah. But, bro, now you, you've got your foot. I mean, you've always had your foot in the door, like with the industry, with, you know, more of the other projects that you were going to talk about. But now you've got Netflix attached to you that you I'm sure you've thought about this already but you could you know see if you can holler the Ugandan guy I think his name's Tendo who produced um, Queen Nukatwe and he works at Netflix you could holler him and see if you can like try jump on your, your series you see I never knew that until you just said it <laughs> uh -huh. you see I'm here to help bro he's so, yeah, yeah I'm definitely gonna message him I'm his last name, I think, I forgot what his last name, but his first name is Tendo, and he was one of the execs. I think he used to work at Disney, but then he ended up going to Netflix. I, I don't know if he's still there, but like, now you can just say, hey, I'm, I'm the guy from Mirror Boy, man. Come on, come on. Help a brother out. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so, that is so sick. Okay. Um, so you said you went to uni, right? Um, what uni did you go to, and what did you study? I uh, went to University of Hertfordshire and studied business and IT. Ah, I see. So, totally different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, business. I, I did business. Well, I started off with business in Japanese, but I did business as well. So what made you do business? And then how did you go from business to doing acting, writing, and directing? Um, business, just because I wanted to be a businessman or entrepreneur. Hmm. Um, and IT, because I was good at it. And I'd been doing it since I was like 12, 13. And it's just something I still do. And something, I guess it's, it's been very fortunate because we need it regardless. Yeah. Like it will still be going even after we've gone, you know? Mm. So I was like, I need something sustainable. And it, yeah, it wasn't until after the mirror, but I was like, um, I'm actually making a living off this. I'm making a lot of money from this. And um, this is actually what I really want to do. Mm. Like I wanted to do the business, but when, when I started making more money from it, I was like, no, nah, no, nah, the acting is, is something that I want to do because I really enjoy it. Yeah. So yeah, business and IT is something that I study. Nice. And how, how, did, um, how did your parents... Um or at least your guardians, like, how did they respond to hearing that, okay, I want to focus a lot more on the acting than the business? Was it an easy conversation for you to have with them? Yeah, my mum, my mum's so supportive. Okay. Um, and she's been supportive. My dad too, before he passed, he's been supportive. And it was a thing where usually you get, you get the conversations or you hear people saying, uh, their mum wanted them to be a doctor, lawyer, uh, da, 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 all these other things. But my mum never even pushed me in any direction. She said, as long as you're happy, just do it. And it's been a thing that I've just been doing. Yeah. So it wasn't a difficult conversation at all to have with my mum. Like, she's been championing me ever since. Uh, that is so sick. That's, that's good. And I'm hearing more, more and more of that. Like, the more people I speak to, but like, yeah, like, I guess... Ugandan parents are becoming more and more, or at least maybe people didn't know that the work, they can be very supportive when it comes to their children doing creative stuff. Because even my mom as well, like, she knew obviously that I was into acting, but she did recommend that I do, you know, something more academic and more kind of, I guess, traditional. And, um, but she still, yeah, she was supportive. And my dad as well, they were supportive. Obviously, they had their moments of doubts, but they were still supportive. But I wanted to ask about this series, like, so 
you're currently on a, on another series, which this one is, is it a Nickelodeon series, right? Called Find Me in Paris. Um, it's Nickelodeon slash Disney. It's, okay. a, it's a Disney series, but they've, they've sold it to Nickelodeon in the UK. Um, they've also got Disney in Europe and Hulu in the States. Ah, dope. How, how did that come about? Um, same as the, every other audition, man. Got called in for an audition. Actually got called in for the first season. Okay. Um, and for me, I think it was one of the best auditions that I've, I've had. One of the best auditions, not the best, but one of the best auditions that I've, I've had because it was a group audition. Um, or it was a partner audition. Mm. And one of my close friends had the same audition as well but he played the other character okay. so um i managed to change my audition time to the same time as him um and we went into the audition together and we had been practicing together so it just felt like what i'd rehearsed at home is what i did in the room like yeah. we were we were on fire okay i didn't get it oh i didn't get it i got a course but i didn't get it mm, this is serious one the, the, in season yeah, season one. one, season one. Yeah, season one, yeah. Yeah, so the next, um, next season, it came, um, next season, they were casting again. They called me in. And, yeah, I just, I think there was like three or four rounds, but I just, I just had to knock them out, knock them out. And I guess I felt more comfortable because I did so well in the first one. Um, so I felt confident. I felt like, no, this this is mine, and yeah, fourth audition. They, like they they told me auditioned in February. I didn't get the job until July. Yeah, ay, ay, ay. what a long time to make someone wait. That's a long time. Ay, ay, That's ay. a long time to make an audition. I mean, wait, wait, wait for um confirmation. You know, hmm. so it it wasn't. It, it was hard because at the same time, I was just pestering my agent. What are they saying? What are they saying? What are they saying? Um, and they said they're interested. But for me, I was like, don't tell me they're interested. Just tell me I got the job. Yeah. yeah you know? Yeah. So, um, yeah. A um, few months later, I was flying out to Belgium and I shot it there. Wow. So wait, so they're tricking us. They're telling us to find them in Paris and they're not even filming it in Paris. Like, just check. And, 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 and they they, they film in Paris, um, but my scenes particularly were in Belgium because of the vent, uh, because of, I say, the set that they used. It was actually a shop that they needed to use. And, this, and, this, and the scene is beautiful. Like, it's in a clock shop. Mm. Um, all the scenes are beautiful. It's in a clock shop. But it's a very old type of clock shop. Mm. Um, and you've got cogs everywhere, walls, and, and, it's, and, it's, and, it, and it actually still is in production, the shop. Yeah. Oh, wow, wow, wow. That is sick. Yeah. So what, what's, yeah, the, what's the future hold for, like, Eddie Kabatuzzi, like, filmmaker, and also Eddie Kabatuzzi actor? What does the future hold at the moment? I know it's a bit kind of uncertain, but what do you hope to get in the next few years? Um... So when I'm in the Western world, when I'm in Europe or America, um, I just want to push the acting. Yeah, yeah. When I'm in Uganda and Africa, I want to push the production. Mm -hmm. So as an actor, I want to get a few more jobs under my belt. Um, a few big jobs because I fund everything myself. So I guess when I'm working as an actor, that's what's funding me to make my films back home. Yeah, yeah. We've got something coming out soon. Uh, yeah, we've got something coming out this year, which I won't talk about too much. But it's it's probably, yeah, it's probably my biggest, one of my biggest jobs. It's a, it's yeah, it's, job. it's yeah, bigger than the series. <laughs> so yeah, and with with the filmmaking, just can continue making content. I want to really push this series. Um, if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. I'm still trying to make it happen 
of my own funds. Okay. But it would be nice if some people fund me as well. Um, yeah, I just want to create more content in Uganda. Uh, so, now, uh, in regards to like creating stuff in Uganda, like what 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 was what did you find the best thing about working with the old Ugandan crew, and what what did you find to be the most challenging? So, I guess it's two questions: best thing about working with the old Ugandan crew, and most challenging thing. The best thing, one of the best things, um, I guess everyone just looks like you. Mm. Everyone can relate, everyone feels like family. Um, yeah, there was just a sense of belonging, you know. That was one of the best things. Also, lunchtime. When it came to lunchtime, we were eating good. <laughs> eating good. Like, when we were when you're here, you get all sorts. You get like soup. Yeah. Uh, they give you a tea in the morning. Yeah. You know? But there, I was having my talk and beans for lunch. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that was wicked. Grounded nuts, everything. Charity. Party, uh, everything. Yeah. Oh, that's dope. But, um, and, 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 and also the scenery, man. We have been yeah. filming this just so beautiful. Mm. So um, that was one of the things about working back home. Um, some of the challenges. So in my first film, um, the generator went. Mm. I was in the middle of a quarry. Middle of a quarry and the generator went. <laughs> now, I filmed in 24 hours and I needed to film before sunrise. It was like four in the morning. So the sun was about to come up by five, but the generator went. Mm. And and to keep consistency in the film, I needed the the sun to stay down. But I don't have any control over that. I have control over the generator mm. to keep the light up. Mm. So uh, it's, it was the electricity going <laughs> in the middle of a quarry that I couldn't do. And the thing is, it went twice. Yeah. The second time... Um, the cable, the cable caught on fire. It, it, it caught on fire, and yeah, I, I just didn't know what to. I, I'd finished. I'd, I'd given up. <laughs> I said I've had oh. enough. Oh man! But my producer, my producer pushed. I actually went into the car to close my eyes because I couldn't come and kill myself. Uh, yeah, yeah. Hey. Was, look, but that, that's a bit. But my producer. That's a bit confusing because I thought, the, I thought the, the generator was meant to be the backup when the electricity goes. It was in the middle of a quarry. Oh. So it was, that, that was the only form of electricity. Okay. Yeah, I had floodlights um, and they were running off the generator, mm. but the generator had gone. Man. So yeah, that, that was a different. Yeah. Big okay. difficulty. But that actually that's not too too bad yeah. that's not too bad of a challenge because I guess it's it's technology. So technology is hard to sometimes control, isn't it? You can't you know because one of the things people say about yeah. sorry mate. No 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 I agree. It's not that big of a challenge, but at the time it felt like it. Oh yeah, of course. At the time you're like, damn, like this is the end of the film. I don't know what we're going to do, but yeah, because like I thought one of the challenges, I guess I grew up hearing is like working with Ugandans can be a bit, can be a bit of a challenge because, mm -hmm. like, you know, you don't know what to expect. There's inconsistency. You're scared people are going to try to fleece you. But you're telling me actually in this case, it was a really good thing because you had people that look like you, you know, they created a nice environment. So it's good to know that actually, what we grow up hearing isn't necessarily true in all cases. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's that's dope. That's dope. Okay, well, let's end with the final section. I just wanted to say, like, thank you for, like, obviously giving us that, that journey, that story into, you know, how you've gotten to your filmmaking and your acting journey as well. So I want to end it with, um, like, this little quiz. I don't know if you've been watching the other 
episodes, but this is the quiz that has people sweating, you know. Those of us that claim to be clued up with Uganda, this is where people start sweating. So this is the proper Ugandan quiz uh, with Eddie Kabutuzi. Okay. I'm already, I'm already sweating. I'm already sweating. What's that? I'm already sweating. I know I'm not good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to... Like I made it easy. I try to make it easy. So question one: Name two other Ugandan cities. Just two. I just need two. That's all. Apart from Kampala Jinja and Kabale. Yeah, dope. Okay, cool. No, Jinja. that's good. You said Jinja. Okay, dope. Question two. Name one Buganda clan. One Buganda clan. Now. Oh, I can, I can hear you though. I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Okay, perfect. All right. Question two. Name one Buganda clan. One Buganda clan. Can I just say this, yeah? Everyone always thinks... Okay, let me not say that. Um, is, is Lua one? Okay, that, that counts as a tribe. That sounds as, counts as a tribe. And also, I need, to, I need to say this. I don't want to assume, but like, is your family Buganda, uh, Basoga, what tribe? Hello. I'm Ruchiga. Oh, Ruchiga. Okay. Okay. So this question. I'm half Ruchiga and half. Oh, half Ruchiga. Half... Oh, you're Ruchiga. Ruchiga and Munyankole. Half. Oh, so Ruchiga and Munyankole. I'm gonna say people always think sorry say say it again i'm losing you i'm losing you bro i'm trying to, i'm trying to go where the wi-fi is now <laughs> okay. okay maybe maybe take it to put it onto your 4g okay i can hear you now i can hear you now Okay, you can hear me. Yeah, I can hear you. So you were saying that you're Muchika and Nyankole. Oh, we've lost, we've lost. Cool. Oh, you're back, you're back. Yeah. Yes. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I can. I'm here. Okay. Hello. Let's let's see if you I'm can here. hear. Hello, Mr. Trisco. Hello. 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 Yes, yes, you're back. Okay, bro. So what you were saying? You were saying that your 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 Muchika and Munyankole. Hey, Bro, I can hear you. Well, I can't hear you. Oh, yeah, okay. Hello? Yeah, you were saying we're stuck on this on this thing. So I just wanted to double check because obviously sometimes us Baganda can be very Baganda centric. But you were saying that your Muchiga and Munyan call it.
Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, then, then can I ask, like you see in your tribes, do you guys have the whole clan thing? Because I know in the Bugandic tribe, it's a very kind of... No. Do you have... My dad's... My dad... My dad... We, 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 I would like to say we do. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, I can't well, confirm that though. Hello? Okay. No, no worries, uh, man. No worries. That, that, that question, we just, we just lodged that question. We lodged it. So question three, what currency does Uganda use? Uganda Yes. Question four. Where is the Ugandan embassy in London? Where is the Ugandan embassy in London? Yes, I heard I heard, I heard Trafalgar Square. Okay. One one final question. One final question. Name one Ugandan TV station in Uganda. One Ugandan TV station in Uganda. NTV. Oh, did I hear NTV? Did I hear NTV? I don't know if that's Kenyan, you know. Hello? Did you hear that? Yeah, 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 I heard. Is that, is that, is that? L N T V. yeah. Is it Ugandan or Kenyan? I could never. Yeah. Or, or Pearl Magic. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yes, that one. Okay. I mean, I accept all of this because they are in Uganda. Okay. Okay, Pearl Magic. So you see, you see the email I sent to see. Pearl Magic, Pearl, I'm saying Pearl Magic. Oh, Pearl Magic. I think I've heard of that. Yeah, that sounds familiar. It's breaking up. <laughs> it's keep breaking up, bro. I don't know why, but let's, 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 um, let's just leave it there because it keeps breaking up. Um, and it's, it's, it's not fun for people listening. Um, but I wanted to say, if you can hear me, I want to say thank you for taking the time out to speak to me. And I really appreciate it. And obviously, I'm hoping that we can work together properly in the future in any capacity. So let me know in any way that I can help. If you can hear that. If you can hear that, bro. Sorry, man. Thank you. So, sorry, bro. Like, for some reason, the internet. I, I, I heard all of That's cool. I was saying that I can. Say that again. I said I could hear you perfectly. It was only when you were asking the questions that I could hear you. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. So, you can hear me now. <laughs> Yeah, did you get, what questions did you stop at? What questions were you able to hear? Um, the last question about what channel, and then when I said Pearl Magic, you've heard of Pearl Magic. Yeah, I, I've heard of, yeah, I've heard of Pearl Magic, and I was saying, um, okay, so that means, 
Oh, okay. So you got to the end. You got, I would say, yeah, you got four out of five. Four out of five, which is actually, I think, the highest, the, the second highest score. Hold on. What was the question I got wrong? Well, we didn't ask the, the Buganda clan one because that one was very yeah, good. So it's, it's four out of four questions then. Yeah. <laughs> okay, all right. Four out of four then. You got me there. You got me there. <laughs> okay. But, okay, so, so did you manage to get a fact of the week? A fact of the week? Um, no worries if you didn't. I, I've got one. No. Okay, well, I've got one. Um, well, according to a journal that I wrote, that I read, um, apparently there's no written history of the Buganda people, and it could be also no written history of Uganda pre 1860s. So, oh, wow. anytime before 1860s, there's no written history simply because our history was oral, it was oral based. So, yeah, the, we only started documenting 1860s plus. So, yeah, that's a bit, that's a bit that's mad. Interesting. It's interesting, but it's a bit mad. Like, you can't find what everyday people did in the 1700s, yeah. you know? I've got an interesting fact. Oh, go on, bro. Um, Uganda, one of the only few countries in Africa to still be using shillings. Oh, what's the other ones? Like Kenya, I know Kenya uses. Yeah, so a lot of the East East African countries. Mm -hmm. um, Kenya, where else? I can't remember the rest. I only knew, I only know Uganda was there. Yeah, that's, yeah. That is I, think, I, think, I think there's like five. Hmm. Yeah. That's mad. Okay, so you were saying that you're, Muchiga and also Munyankore. So do you have any words in those two languages? Or Muchiga and or Nyankore? Do you have any words? I bear in mind that I can't speak the language. Hmm. Um in Shaho. In Shaho, what does that mean? I probably I'm probably they're gonna cuss me. They're probably <laughs> saying I'm <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, your bag. Your bag and your bruv. I had to I had to just accept the fact that people are gonna go in on my Uganda. I just have to accept it, bruv. I put I literally I put a um a freestyle on my Facebook and my dad must have sent it to one of his friends aside. And he was sending me a, a voice note saying, Oh yeah, listen to my friend's voice note. He gives you feedback on your freestyle. And in the freestyle, bruv, it was such a tiny thing, and obviously I messed up. I'm sure I did, but I say that I'm the Kavaka of rap. And in Luganda, Kavaka means king. And apparently in the Buganda tribe, you're not allowed to call yourself Kavaka at all. Uh -huh. you you're the Kavaka of this Kavaka. You're, there's only one Kavaka. So the dude <laughs> sent a long ass voice note telling me that, nah, you shouldn't do that. You know, you're gonna have to change that, you know, because you get, they'll kick you out of Uganda effectively. So, oh wow, yeah, I'm gonna, <laughs> to, I'm gonna have to rechange that. <laughs> yeah, so they take they rightly so they take their language very seriously, rightly so, and so should we. But listen, bro, um, yeah, thank you. Man. I don't know if you managed to hear anything that I said before. I said I would love to work with you in any capacity as possible. So, if you need any help, or anyone wants to you know, read through your, your part, so. Or even to be in your shows, you know, I'm paying for my flight to Uganda, man. I would love to be in one of your films or shows. You just let me know my person. Definitely, definitely, bro. It would, be, it would be a pleasure to have you back in there. Yes. Like, that industry is, is so um, virgin right now. Mm. Now's the best time. 100%. 100%, yeah. And if you want to make a feature, hats off to you, like, there's so many people out there that can help you. Mm. Um, there's so many people I can connect you with, right? That I've made of just the two films that I've made, you know. So, um, yeah, um, I'll, pro I'll probably send you an email for all the stuff. Yeah, that'll be good, man. I definitely love to work with Savannah Moon, 
you know, uh, uh, I would definitely love to. So if you, if you can get me in touch with anyone, and if there's anything that I can do to help as well, like, let me know. Uh, do you know, I'll send the introduction email. Yes, or, please. No. Do, do you want that now, or do you want it when you're closer to being ready? Um, if I can get it now, actually, it would be good, because then I can just start the conversation. Get the get it. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, okay, um, let people know how they can find you on social media, not only on Reddit or Facebook, but on Twitter. You tweet hard, so. <laughs> yeah, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter. Mm-hmm. Eddie Drisco, that's E double D D I E D R I S C O. Drisco. Can you tell us, us Drisco? Where, where did that come from? <laughs> Do you know what? This, this, this is a a name that I've had early, early, early when I was quite younger, when I was quite young. Um, just because people couldn't say, <laughs> say my name. Oh, okay. It's, it's, not, it's not a real name. It's not on my birth certificate. It's, hmm. it's just a nickname because it, it flows out the mouth easily. Okay. Well, okay. I've got two things. First thing is, I, 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 I had a conversation with... Um, Katasi, Katasi Jonde, I don't I think you know her. And yes. she, was, she was like, yes, we're going to have, for the Elevate 256, we're going to have Eddie Driscoll. I was like, All right, she's calling him Eddie Driscoll. <laughs> like, like his real name. <laughs> <laughs> if people want to use that as my name, um, I don't know how I feel about that. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> but that's, that's, if that's what they see, then cool. Yeah. That can be my agents. Well, the second thing I was going to say is why do we have to make it easier for people? We don't. We don't. Yeah. And that's something that I've grown up. Hmm. Um, Something that I've just grown grown up to understand. You know, so it's, it's, yes, it's my social handle, but it's not my name, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we, we will get used to it. Like, I'm not going to lie to you. Even my last name, you know, I know that's a difficult name to pronounce or spell for people. So, you know, I take that into consideration. But eventually people get used to it, man. You know? Yeah. And I just clocked it. I probably made a mistake as well because I assumed, like, usual Buganda. Buganda. <laughs> I assumed you were Muganda. So I, I, made, I probably made the wrong translation for your last name, Kabutusi. Because... No, that's fine. That's correct. It's correct. Okay. Okay. Cool. It, does it relate to water? Because I know in Uganda it relates to water or to sea. It's like um, that's something I need to find out. To be honest. Okay. Yeah. All right, bro. Okay. Well, let me let you enjoy the rest of the afternoon. But um, yeah, thank you again, bro. And uh, let's speak soon. Cool. Yes, bro. Okay. Yes, bro. Just a quick one. Yeah. Are you spoke, I realized. Have you spoken to Jane? <laughs> Who? Jane. Remind Jane. Who? <laughs> Shepherd. Brav. Oh my God. Yeah, we were in the same agency, in it, Jane Shepherd. I haven't spoken to her personally, but I did change agents as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. I yeah. Did, I did agent but i saw that you were shepherds yeah 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 no i changed agents from shepherds as well shepherds yeah i changed recently so that's the last time i spoke oh. to her. sent an email um i went to tablestock wood instead it was no snakery it's just i've got like you know i'll be able to like maybe get certain things done there do you know what i mean that, how long were you with shepherd fox bruv i'm i'm ashamed to say this for like maybe Three months, bruv. I'm so, I'm so ashamed to say it. Wow. So ashamed. Yeah, yeah. Have you spoken to her? Yeah, um, I emailed her this morning, to be honest. Okay. We were emailing this morning and stuff. Yeah. They, 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 for me, I've been with them since I did Liberian, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like four years or so. Mm. Um, yeah, they're good for me. Yeah. No, no, I'm no, work- no. I'm working, I'm working. So, um. I can't complain. No, they're good people. They're very good people. I went into the office. I've never met Jane per se. She wasn't there. But like, yeah, they're, they're, they're really lovely people. I got a good vibe from them. But I guess yeah. for me, it was more of a business decision, you know. Of course, so. it's, it is business. Exactly, exactly. And you shouldn't feel apolo- apologetic, about, apologetic about it. 
Yeah. <coughs> but when it's a uh, further your career. Yeah, 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 hundred percent, bro, hundred percent. Okay, is she okay? Have you spoken to her? Is she okay? Yeah, yeah, she's good. She's good. She's okay. cool. Okay. Uh, yeah. Dope. I was talking to her about you. She don't know that we know each other. Oh, okay. Yeah. Dope. I know. I know that. And actually, I remember we we me and you went to an audition for the same some comedy thing back back in the days. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 We with them then, innit? I was. I think so. It must have been. Yeah, it was because my last two agents have been crap. Oh, you don't. Terrible. You don't want to say who? No, 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 no. Because it's still recording. Yeah. <laughs> you are a clever man. <laughs> Very clever. <laughs> I was meant to stop recording, bro. But you, 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 you caught me off guard. You're like one more thing. Um, 